Boston qualifier. Are you kidding me? And welcome back to another edition of Running with James. This is the Boston Qualifier Edition um, because that's my goal this year. That's been my big goal. Um, I'm really excited because I had some goals uh, specifically for OCR Obstacle Course Racing. Um, I wanted to podium um, in at least three events and I podiumed in all but one. So I podiumed in five different events um, and all but two of them were first place finishes. So big improvements, really, really excited about that. And so, but the big thing this year I wanted to try to do was I wanted to qualify for Boston. Um, and so this is the beginning of my training block for that. I've got a couple other folks that I'm training that we're kind of doing this together and we're going on the journey. So I wanted to take you guys with me today kind of on what I do or what I'm gonna be doing to get ready for this marathon. Um, and not just a marathon, but a fast marathon. Just to think about those two terms together. If you'd asked me that a couple years ago, I'd have been like, you're out of your ever-loving mind, right? Uh, and so, uh, I'm gonna take you with me today, so kind of my prep, what I'm doing on my runs, and we'll talk while we're on the run. All right, guys, so let's get this thing started. So, we're gonna make our way to the preparation area, also known as uh, the kitchen. So, what I like to do before I get started, very first thing in the morning, normally what I'll do is mm, drink some agua. Uh, because water is going to be super duper important in getting the hydration that your muscles are going to need. So, mm, drink a lot of water. Secondly, you always got to get whatever you're going to take with you. So if I'm going to do like a three or four mile run, normally I don't take anything with me. I just run out the door and get it done. Uh, but if I'm gonna be doing a longer run, like today, I'm doing uh, five to eight miles. Now that's a big gap. So I'm still kind of coming off a recovery week from my uh, my race that I did just the other weekend ago. And so uh, I still haven't decided if I'm gonna run five or eight, just depending on how my legs are feeling, how my body's feeling. Because I have another race this Sunday that I'm doing, and it's the Cypress Half. And uh, basically, it's I'm gonna do a, a relay, right? So. Uh, one of the guys I train, Rocky, he's going to be my uh, my little buddy. Um, he's going to be my, my second half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pace my wife, Leah, for the last half of it because she's going to run the last leg. Um, so uh, I want to make sure my legs stay pretty fresh. I don't want to you know start this training block off on the wrong foot. But part of the reason why I'm doing this is to see kind of like where my baseline is um, because running on the roads is way different than running in the streets, right? Um, so what <clears throat> what's important to understand is your turnover is different, uh, your cadence is gonna be different. So when you're running on a trail up and down, your cadence tends to be much, much slower. Um, whereas on a road, obviously the, the, the surface is harder, right? Um, so the, the rebound is gonna be different, the impact on your body is way different. Um, and then in addition to that, um, you're not gonna have, especially in Houston, you're not gonna have a ton of rolling hills up and down, right? So, uh, so that's kind of why I'm doing a a five to eight mile run and not just like an eight mile run today. So it's just gonna kind of be on how I feel. Um, once I get out of this week um, into next week, um, then it'll be a little more, it'll definitely be a lot more structured in that, right? So, um, but my goal this week, just kind of get back onto, you know, back into pace and back into where I'm supposed to be is to try to get about 40 to 45 miles this week. Um, and then next week I'll be back around 45. To 50 and then the week after that it'll be pretty consistent for a couple of weeks around that 50 mile range um, and then ultimately working up to the point where I can get uh, to um, <clears throat> I want to max out at about 70 miles um, in February um, before the race with the race is in March right so I've got plenty of time as far as the training block so I'm excited about that okay guys so I got my water I uh, ate a little something a little bit earlier, so first thing I'm gonna like to do is I'll drink a cup of water um, and then I'll eat a little something before I go run. So depending on which run it is, um, so like Wednesday, my, my medium distance run, I normally just grab like a little protein bar or something like that. 
um, about an hour before, jump in the shower, and then get ready. Um, and then on my longer run, what I'll do um, is I'll actually get up a couple hours before, I'll treat it like race day, um, and eat some oatmeal uh, with some fruit, um, and then maybe even drink a cup of coffee. Um, that way I have plenty of time to process it and get it out, right? So we're pretty much ready to go. So let's grab uh, my sunglasses out of the Jeep. Um, and then we will uh, hit the road. So normally it does not take me this long to get in and out. So normally I'm like clockwork, get up, unless I'm dragging butt, which happens sometimes. Um, and uh, we'll be in and out of the door. In and out. So, but I do want to hit some, uh, some specific topics or whatever as far as like what my plan is for my Boston qualifier, right? So what my plan is to actually get there. So as I take off on my run, you know, the first half mile or so is really just gonna be about warming up. It's gonna be about uh, just waking the legs up, you know, kind of getting the cobwebs off, get the blood flowing to the legs, um, and uh, just really getting ready so we can have a good run. Uh, once I get my kind of half mile warm up in, then I always do drills, right? So one of the big things that I know I need to do if I'm gonna hit this time um, necessary for to qualify for Boston is I have to get, I have to be a better runner, right? I have to be more efficient in my my turnover, um, using you know less energy, so being faster with you know a lot less energy. So um, so the drills really really help with that. So no matter what run I'm doing, whether it's a recovery run. Uh, whether it's a long run, speed work, doesn't matter. I always, always, always do some drills um, beforehand. Um, and I've, I've been feeling a difference, right? My, 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 my running form has definitely improved over the last year or so. Um, and the style, the way I run, but it's making me faster. So the drills uh, are a big deal uh, and they really, really, really do help. So last year, a friend of mine, Leslie, the crazy llama, asked me, hey James, run the marathon with me. And I was like, nah, I'm good. She's like, no, 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 run the marathon with me. And I was like, I don't really have an interest in doing something where the first person who ever did it died, right? And that's not really the truth, right? If you go back to Athens and you know the story, we're not gonna go into it, but, it's a hard race and I knew that, right? And so, really didn't have an interest in it. Didn't really fit into my OCR plans, things of that nature. But she wanted to do it. And being the kind of guy I am, I was like, all right, I'll help you. So, started training for it, getting ready. Because I believe you're gonna do anything, you gotta do it to the best of your ability, right? So, ran it, or was preparing for it and she got hurt and she ended up not running it. So I convinced a couple other people to do it and they didn't stick necessarily with the training. So my original goal was just to finish, right? Finish under four hours. And then when Leslie was doing it was to help her, you know, run fairly fast, right? Well, about halfway through when I found out she wasn't gonna do it, I knew four hours was not a good goal for myself to try to run. Wasn't very realistic. So based off my training, my running, I changed it to three and a half hours. So fast forward to race day, take off, feeling great. Weather was pretty deep, it was cold. Race, race weather was good. And 
I took off run about a 720 pace or so and I felt amazing and so about halfway through was around I think at the halfway point I was 130 something and I was on pace actually because I'd look because someone had made a mention to it I was actually on pace for a qualifying time so I was like I feel good I'm gonna just keep going so fast forward to mile 22 bonk hit the wall hard because I was running too fast right for the fitness and my experience at the time so ended up with a 320 something time which for your first marathon it's not bad especially running by yourself no pacer still working on nutrition because my nutrition plan was okay but like I said earlier I probably needed a little bit more and so I was good I was happy finished the marathon did something I thought I'd never do or really didn't want to do and it really opened my eyes up though to you know not just what I was capable of doing but other people are capable of doing if you train properly train smart so I've seen so many stories of people who you know ran you know slow times for years and years and years started training properly and ran fast crazy times so I figured the natural progression is to just keep working right so you don't just stop when you hit one goal you set another one and so that's what this BQ is all about it's not just for myself to challenge myself but hopefully I can inspire inspire some other folks whether it's my clients people out there in the world to you know shoot for the stars try something that you think is almost impossible right set that goal high and when you do then tell somebody about it so that's that's what this video is about this video is all about letting you guys know what my goal is for this year something to think about is it's not just about today right it's not just about this run today it's not about you know missing or getting every single run it's about being consistent week in and week out with your training whether that's drills whether that's you know strength work we've got a tree crossing so i don't want to get ran over okay so as i was saying consistency is really what it's all about right so being able to put in those miles day in and day out and over a long enough period of time you build up this foundation so i like to think of things training every training block whether it's for obstacle course training ninja warrior strength training it doesn't matter what it is there's a training pyramid right and so the bigger your foundation the bigger your base then the higher the peak so if we're talking about running specifically the larger your aerobic base the faster you can eventually go um, and so if you treat every layer of that pyramid like a four to six week training block four to twelve week training block something like that and you're constantly building upon it and the closer you get to your event you can get more race specific um, with your training you cannot help but succeed you cannot help but get faster and so you know most of my training is done just like this nice and slow i can hold a conversation my heart rate's down but working in some speed right really building uh, that strength up is going to be super important the closer we get to race day um, and so you know for the next few weeks i'm just gonna be working on my aerobic fitness make sure my body's fully recovered from you know my last few races um, and then starting in december i'm gonna be doing some very specific strength building with tempo runs some threshold runs that'll gradually build through the weeks um, and then same thing as i build with my, with my mileage um, and so january i'm gonna run a half marathon the ramco half marathon um, as my test, right? To kind of see is my fitness where it needs to be. Um, and my time needs to be around 130, you know, 129, 130. And the goal is really 129. Uh, to see if I'm gonna be on pace to be able to hit that, uh, you know, that 305 time, right? So, you know, you can't just take your half marathon time and double it. You have to take your half marathon time and add some time because it's double the distance, right? Um, and so that's, that's my goal, right? And then I'll have another about six weeks or so of training to really kind of dial in my, you know, any changes I need to make for that uh, that Boston qualifier in the Woodlands when I run the Woodlands race. So, you know, it's, it's aggressive, right? And it's what I want to do. Um, and so I want you guys to take this journey with me. Um, and, you know, I hope we were successful together. So make big goals, right? Have big, 
big dreams or whatever it may be, you know, but no, you don't have to do it by yourself. No, you can get people to help you. And that's what having a great community is all about, being a part of a great community, whether it's a church community, you know, whether it's a gym community, you know, whether it's a running community, whatever it is, you got to get connected with other people because we're definitely not meant to do this thing alone. Morning. Morning. Always be polite when you pass people on the road, on the trail. <laughs> That's actually one of my pet peeves. So I love when I'm running. I say, I say hello to everybody, smile real big. <clears throat> Just to see the kind of responses I get from people. And most people look ticked off. They're like, oh, I gotta be out here running. This is a ball. And even though sometimes, you know, running's not the funnest thing in the world to do, right? Because most things that are hard, right, are not always, you know, or worth doing are hard and can sometimes not be fun, but learning to enjoy it and understand how blessed we are to be able to get on our two legs and take off running. So, you're gonna do it. Enjoy it as much as you can, smile, big smile. Say hello to other people. Give people encouragement when they're on the road. They need it. At least the people I'm passing need it all the time. All right, guys. So uh, that's pretty much it as far as the run goes. Um, I'm going to do a few strides just to kind of end this up. So strides are basically, you know, 90, 95% of your top end speed. So it's not a sprint, but almost. Um, I like to do you know, three or so, four or so on, you know, easy days, long runs, uh, on like uh, recovery days, I'll do, you know, maybe six to eight. And so strides just really help to work on your turnover, your leg speed, um, and they really help to increase blood circulation. So you may feel like, uh, after a long run or something like that, but you'd be surprised just doing that little bit of uh, strides or striding at the end of your run will pay you know huge dividends in how you feel later on, but also in your running form. So I'm gonna knock out a couple of these and then we'll pretty much be done. Okay, okay, okay. Well, good job guys. So about seven miles, uh, just over seven miles, about 920 a mile, 141 beats per minute on that heart rate. So well in zone three, uh, keeping that aerobic fitness up. So I had to slow down quite a bit today to keep that heart rate where it needed to be. Um, partly because I was carrying the camera, but also um, because it's a little warm outside. It's a beautiful day, gorgeous day, um, but it's a little warmer than it's been. Um, and so obviously heat plays a factor um, in your performance. So you gotta slow down sometimes, right? So, uh, and then once I'm done with my strides, you know, I popped in the shower, obviously, uh, so I can look fresh and clean. Uh, but then I like to get something in my body, some kind of nutrition. <sighs> yeah, like that, like that, right? So this is like a core protein uh, energy drink, or not energy drink, but a protein drink, right? So it's got uh, protein in it, it's got carbohydrates, a little bit of fat, not too much, and some sugar. So it's just replenishing the body, right? Um, and so that's gonna be the key is, you know, for success, no matter what you're doing, is not only good training, right? Not only a good plan, not only aggressive goals, um, but then doing the little things like sleep and stretching and warming up and uh, doing the strides, getting the right uh, things in your body, because this is like the fuel, right? This is gonna make you healthy, so this can help me recover faster so I can, you know, get back at it tomorrow morning. So um, I think it's gonna be a super important, you know, going through this that I have you guys to help support me. So. Uh, a Boston qualifier is no joke. Um, so I'm gonna have to average around seven, 705 minute mile paces. And that's fast, that's pretty fast. So, um, or it's fast for me, right? So fast is relative for, for everyone, right? So uh, for me, that's fast. So, you know, uh, I got a lot of work to do, uh, but I believe I can do it. I really believe I can do it. Um, and so you guys pushing me, you guys holding me accountable is gonna help. Um, and you know some of the other people like uh, Rocky, Adrian Gonzalez, he's going for a Boston qualifier. Um, I, one of my clients, Michelle Rigo, uh, she hasn't 
committed fully yet, but I'm pretty sure she's gonna go for it. Um, and then there are a couple of other folks as well um, that I'm really trying to convince to uh, that they could do it. Chrissy Kaufman, she's one of the one of the coaches and our in uh, our run group at the Cray Run Group, and you know she had an original goal, but I think I've convinced her that she could qualify for Boston. She's fast and she is definitely capable of doing it. So. I hope we can take this journey together. Lou Fergoso is another one that's going for it. So I hope we can do this together, guys. So if you liked the video, if you enjoyed the content, give us a thumbs up. Share us with your friends and your family because you always share James with the people that you love, right? And remember, as we go through this journey, right, every day, let's learn something new. Let's change the way we think about things, right? Because if we change our minds, what? We can change our lives. So thanks so much, guys. For the next couple weeks, we'll be doing some shoe reviews. Uh, we'll actually be reviewing this. I'm going to race in this shoe this coming weekend. Um, so we'll review the uh, Nike uh, Next Percent and give you my opinions on it. And uh, then we've got a couple other shoes we're going to review over the next few weeks. So and we'll just it's all about this journey, right? So we'll keep checking in, let you guys know how the training's going. In the comments down below, what are your goals? A few a few months ago, uh, we did a. a, a a video about goals and I'll link that up here um, but you know what are your goals right how have you met your goals so far this year um, and what do they look like going into 2020 so take it easy guys we'll check you later I'm gonna go finish this and then I'm gonna eat some breakfast pancakes yo mm-hmm